A lot of people on the internet are saying that you look like Leonardo DiCaprio. What? Well, that couldn't be the farthest thing from Exhibit Leo. A, shall we? <laughs> what why is we take, this? Why don't we take a gander at that one? What is that? So that's Exhibit A. And then let's look at Exhibit B, if you look at the fine details oh. on that. <laughs> do we see a resemblance? Yeah, I think we do. Look at that. Here's what we'll do. I don't no, man. No? Leo, Leo is, is the man. He's the man's man right there. What we should do is I'll give you these photos and you post it on your Instagram. And you I think see, I will. I think I will. And you see what the public says. <laughs> All right. I'm here with UFC middleweight Kelvin Gastelum. You know what's missing from that title? Middleweight champion. Mm, <laughs> we on the same page. Okay. Yeah, we are. Now, have you ever Googled yourself? Yeah, I've done it a few times. What, what did you find? Um, Anything interesting? Usually bad news. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, I Googled you, and let's clear up some Wikipedia facts. Okay? Sure. Wikipedia. Those, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. those guys like to mess with people. <laughs> you claim Yuma, Arizona, correct? Mm -hmm. But you were born in San Jose, California? That's right. Okay, so that's a fact and you worked as a bail bondsman. Correct. Now, that's a pretty interesting job. How old were you when you were working that? I started at 19 years old. I was there for about two and a half years. So you were actually interacting with accused criminals? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you were working All hand time. in hand with bounty hunters? <laughs> oh yeah. How was that like? <laughs> Well, uh, I mean, it just it just is what it is. You know, I was working these odd jobs, hard jobs, labor jobs. And then my, 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 my br well, my brother, I call him my brother. He's like my brother. We grew up together and uh, his brother owns the, co the company. Oh. And um, he gave me a job and they gave me the opportunity. You know, they saw me struggling. They saw me working all these odd jobs, uh, you know, chasing, chasing down criminals and arresting people. And, That's uh, crazy, at 19. Bailing people out of jail and, uh, you know, going in at odd hours of the night. And then you started picking up MMA? Well, then I got in the Ultimate Fighter and then I was able to kind of quit the job. Okay. Quit the old so you were training at that time? Yeah, 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 no, I mean, I mean, it was just something I did on the side, you know, uh, obviously my goal was to always make it in the UFC, but I just didn't think I'd, I'd, I'd make it for until I was like 30. I was just, I was just going to plan on, on going to school and working and, you know, MMA was just something I did on the side. Okay. You know, and even for a little while there, I still wasn't making ends meet and I was thinking about quitting or stop training because the, the time that I use for training, I was going to use it to get another job because, you know, I was struggling at the time. In a past interview, you mentioned that uh, the morning during the fight, you like to go to Denny's. Yeah. And you like to order eggs, hash brown, pancakes, and? Chocolate milk. Yes. Oh, there we go. Here it is. Which leads <laughs> me to the MMA award skit. Ah, okay. For those who don't know what the MMA award skit yeah, that he did. Yeah, that was a good one. That's the one where, um, <laughs> what you got back there? There you we got go. These, right? <laughs> you got the Cheetos. Yes. You forgot the burritos. <laughs> <laughs> Those are coming. <laughs> the idea got brought up to me, and I was like, all right, let's do it, man. Do let's so hear you sing it. Kept weighing over the wrong direction, because 170 was so stressing. Yeah. <laughs> I love Cheetos, <laughs> as well as we eating my burritos. burritos. Followed by some Doritos, not, not to mention, mention the tostitos. tostitos. <laughs> and then you repeat that twice. Yes. That was so It was so good. bad that it was pretty good. Well, at least you didn't disrespect the Popeye's chicken like DC did. It's funny, but the problem is now, people know that. Like, little kids are like, they come up to me and they're like this, right? Because I had two drumsticks. <laughs> like, it, it took on a life of its own, man. The one year anniversary of the Mayweather-McGregor fight just passed, and there's another big boxing fight coming up. Yeah. The Triple G versus Canelo. Canelo. Who are you liking that? Yeah, I like Canelo. I mean, he's the young Mexican superstar, you know, and, and uh, I just like him, you know, as a person, I like him as an athlete and, and what he represents, so I, I think I want Canelo to win. You know, there's another young Mexican superstar. His name's Takashi 6 <laughs> 9 Do you know who that is? I do, unfortunately. What are you, what are you? What do you think about this guy? I Being mean, I'm all for being your own individual self and, and, and being who you are to the fullest, but um, yeah, to he's, out there. he's out there. Okay. So you're here because of the ultimate fighter, heavy hitters. That's right. This season it debuts tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, 
Um, it debuts and FS1 on FS1, and I'm excited, man, because this season was actually really good. Not just because I'm on it, but the people, the stories, the fights. So to provide a little more context, you are one of the coaches, and then Whitaker is the other. Whitaker is the only coach, and it's not even about me or Whitaker in this season. I mean, this all the attention. Is, is, is directed towards the fighters because they're the ones in the competition. Me and Whitaker will take care of our uh, business later, man, because I, I, I want them to focus on the fighters mm. um, for the show. That's for them. Uh, they're the ones competing. They're the ones putting in the work. And, oh, man, they, they just put in so much damn work. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of the work that we put in and, and really excited for the fighters competing in, in the finale. Now, when did you guys start filming this? When was it like, uh, when was it? July 11th. We started July 11th. Wow. We got done August 17th. Wow. So so it is true then, because I always thought there's no way a fighter can recover in a week and then fight oh, yeah. again. Oh, yeah. That's what they do? Yeah. Not only that, they have to make the weight a yeah, couple times. Because some of these fighters get times fucked in a row. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, uh, there was one female fighter that got messed up really, really bad, and she, and she won. Uh... And then had a had a you know had this massive lump all over her faces. Her her eyes were halfway torn, um, and and, and she, I don't know if she was 100% for her next fight. But but yeah, it happens, man. You not only that you get to fight, you have to make the weight again. How does one actually get on the Ultimate Fighter? Do you submit there's a tryout. Thing? There's okay. a tryout. Um, there's an audition for it, and um, you go through different uh, stages in the trial. Obviously, skills, obviously, and then. After the, the the skill part, you get to to be interviewed, and they want to see what your personality is. If you're good for TV, if not, you know how obnoxious you are, or or, or not, you know. It, it, so that actually factors in. That actually factors in a lot, you know, because they one of the things they tell us was now that you're through to this next stage, to the interview stage, a lot of fighters have made it to this part, but. Uh, get cut after because they they don't show you know personality They're or whatever and, gotcha. yeah and they tell us you know fighters like Frankie Edgar have tried out and didn't make it Benson Henderson um, Clay Guida and these are all former champions legit world-class fighters that didn't make it on the ultimate fighter just because the producers didn't think they they, they had it <laughs> mm. so how did you hear about it though I was working uh, at the Bail Bonds office one day, and then um, I always check the MMA Junkie website. Mm -hmm. And one day there was a, an ad saying they were they were having Ultimate Fighter trials for middleweights. And at the time I was five and zero, oh, and so and twenty years old. I, I I remember you have to be twenty one. And so what I did was I emailed the producers. Actually, not the producers. I emailed Joe Silva, who was the matchmaker at the time, and I uh, said, Hey, you know, my birthday is coming up on October. I'm 20 years old, I want to go and try out, what is the cutoff date? And they said, oh, well, it so happens to be on your birthday. And so that's how I was the youngest uh, winner of the Ultimate Fighter was because I was able to get in on my birthday. So like, if, any, if anybody wants to beat my record, they have to beat me by like seconds or something. Nice. You're known for your, your left hand. Can you show me your favorite combo or without giving anything away, because you know, Everybody knows it's the it's one two, man. It's the one two, right down the pipe. Now you know Whitaker also has a, a mean left hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been watching tape too. Yeah. So how does one actually counter that or stop it? Let's demonstrate on me then. <laughs> All right. You can either uh, let, fade away. This. You can either fade away and, and and counter. He stands traditional like right. this, right? And I stand this way. So yes, if so. you throw a left hook, I either block oh. it and counter. Okay. Or I roll it and counter. Okay. Okay. Call me right here. Or I step back and counter. Okay. Sorry, I hit you in the face. No, no, it's, fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. DC kicked me harder. Than <laughs> All right. Good. See how you miss? Yeah. And then I could come down. Oh my god. And then the leg kick. <laughs> how are you with managing weight now since you moved up to middleweight? It's a lot easier for me, and and I don't have to freaking kill myself, and I don't have to be miserable, you know, eating uh, a little bit of rice and a little bit of chicken and a little bit of broccoli. You're depriving yourself of, of a lot of things. You know, it's a big sacrifice if you're cutting that much weight and, and, and it really was. And one time, you know, it came to a point where I was like, you know what, it, it's not that. It's not worth it. It kind of is, but it isn't, you know, I mean, it, it is because, you know, you get to go in there and you fight and you win and you make money, but at the same time, there's health 
um, issues Cut. that come yeah. with it. How much weight were you walking around that you had actually had to cut to get to welcome? Right, so I, I usually walk around two, 205 pounds. Oh, you know, gosh. I'm a, I'm a th thick set guy. So 205, cut down once, you know, I, I probably diet down to about 185, 190, and the rest is all water weight. What? Yeah. There is a difference in power, that's for sure. You know, when I fought Jock Ray in my last fight, I mean, he he landed bombs on me, and, and I felt them all, they just didn't rattle me. I I mean, I I have a pretty good chin. Whenever I get hit, I feel them, I just don't go down. <laughs> you know? All right, predictions. UFC 228, okay, that's Woodley against Till. Man, it just depends on how Till comes in. If he comes in, makes the weight, and looks healthy, he's in smash Woodley. Man. What do you think he's currently weighing right now? Today? I don't know. Last time I saw him, he looked pretty big. <laughs> like, over two? Yeah. All right, so moving on to UFC 229. That's the big one. McGregor, Khabib, who you have? I just think Khabib's pressure is going to be too much for him. Too much. Mm. I've heard time and time again, this this lightweight feels like a heavyweight on top of you, and and, and, and it has the strength of heavyweight. And uh, I just think the pressure is going to be too too much for for McGregor. Have you ever sparred with Khabib? No. You think it's going decision? No. Ooh, give me a round. Three. Mm. He's going to pin him to the ground and, and and either submit him or or, or, or ground and pound. Yeah. Pettis versus Tony Ferguson. Pettis versus Tony. Ooh, that's gonna be a good fight. I got Tony though. I got Tony. Tony is just an incredible athlete. I, I've actually been able to train with Tony, been part of his camps, and the guy's on another level. I mean, he's the real deal. He's one of those crazy cats that doesn't have a team. He doesn't have a team of coaches around him. He does everything on his own, which is weird. Tony is an interesting cat, man. I remember being with him in Big Bear and it's like two, three in the clock in the morning, and I hear, let's go run it. And I'm like, oh God, it's 3 a.m., bro. Dustin Poirier versus Nate Diaz. Mm, oh, we don't even know if Nate Diaz is going to show up, uh, do we? Um, <laughs> I like Dustin. Dustin's on fire right now. Dustin's been in. Uh, He's really. a smaller fighter, though. Yeah, well, he moved up a weight class. Yeah, he was he used to fight at 45. Now he went up to 55 and has been doing great. Apart from the Michael Johnson knockout loss, he and the Eddie Alvarez, I think, fight, uh, he's been on fire, man. I, I like the way he, he fights. Okay. So you got him what round? Nate against Nate? Yeah. Probably the second round. Derek Brunson versus Israel. 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 Israel's a good fighter, man. I mean, he's a different fighter. He knows how to use his range really well, unlike unlike a lot of other fighters that I, I've seen. It's just a difference when you know how to control your range and you know exactly how far away and how close you need to be. It's just a different game when you're fighting someone that knows how to use the range like a Connor. There's a lot of comparisons with him and John Jones. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. He, he looks, he, not only fighting wise, like look wise, he, he kind of looks like him. He's in the same division as you. Do you uh, think you'll ever fight him? Yeah, I think so. Maybe one day. I mean, he's one of those young guns that, that's making a lot of noise right now, and I'm still very young as well. So I think eventually we'll, we'll, we'll be facing each other. Let's end it with the game of Connect Four. You know how we do. Did Josh tell you about this stuff? Josh told me about it. He told me you were undefeated. Hold on, hold on. We, do you know how to play Connect Four? I do. Okay, none of this DC bullshit. Getting me a little scared right now. Four. One, two, three, four. That's not how you play ah! Connect Four. Yes, baby! That's not how you play Yes, baby! Josh, I got we... his ass! A little bored here. Oh, wow. Got you got you. quite a list of victims there. I got... Well, you notice how DC's head's in uh, quotation marks. He, <laughs> he beat Because he beat you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look at you. You already win. Oh, you already lost. Ah, oh, shoot. All right, do the honors. <laughs> Calvin, take your... There ain't no honor in this. Oh, man. At yeah. least I don't feel too bad. I mean, you got Tyron Bryant, Stipe Max there.